Having cleaned the block up on the face, I am now going to do the timing belt while the head's off because these 2.5s are kind of unusual where you don't set them on top dead centre like most cars, most normal cars. You set them on exhaust peak or the EP mark. Now this is a moderner engine, 2.5, but the later ones were like the old two and a quarter diesels and they had a slot in the back, they had a, a cover with a big slot and a pin and you turned it to EP and that was the place where you started to do your timing. But these engines here, well just to be Land Rover they're a little bit different. What you need is a timing pin like this and I'm going to show you where the pin goes. The pin goes in a little hole there. You can see it? It was a bugger to get out and it's a bugger to get in. So what you do is you turn your crank round. Now fortunately on here, let's go to here. They've put a white mark here and you maybe, maybe just be able to see down here there is a dot where the top dead, where the mark is for this alignment here. But it's easy, it's a lot better to do it with a pin and then nothing's going to move. So I want you to see the position of the pistons. So I'm going to screw that pin in, put the camera back on the stand. Now if anybody's wondering, these 2.5s did chatter on the keyways and this, this all came loose. This is nice and tight, so is the, so is the uh, front pulley. I have no need to, con no, no concerns of taking that apart. And there's been no oil leaks, but I am going to change the, um, the tensioner and the belt. But first of all, let's get that crank locked up and I'll show you how it works. So I've got the pin in and listen very carefully. You hear it click in? That's at the timing point to put the belt in. Now look at the pistons. They're all over the place. You see what I mean? They're not even at all. Let's have a look and let's take the camera off and let's have a look. See? Normally you set these at top dead centre. Not this one. So now we can fit the pump onto here. And then we line the timing marks. Now there, somebody's kindly put a little uh, dot of white paint on the dot there. And that lines up with a pointer there. And the same thing for the camshaft, uh, for the injector pump, that goes onto there. So let's get the pump on. With the camshaft in position and the crankshaft locked, the next thing we've got to do is lock up the pump. Why do we do that? Well, these pumps are on slots, so we don't know where the firing stroke is. So what we're going to do is take this little plug that's on the side of the pump and using this little tool that's in this, this little red box of timing pins for Land Rovers, we can screw that into here and turn the pump till it locks like that. And that's locked up. So we won't take that out, leaving that as it is. So that's locked. Now I'll just show you a little tipette on lining up the, the timing marks because they are quite difficult to see when they're on the uh, car you know like this it doesn't look right so grab yourself a mirror and there you should be able to see your timing mark there look at that that's beautiful that and that just changes that angle because from here it looks a tooth out so the next thing fit the pump with the pump on but not fastened down we allow it to turn like this see now the pins in the side of the pump now just be careful of the pin because it does a, you can feel it when it locks into place but it is easy to jump out but you can feel a, a little resistance. Let's zoom in a bit. Might be able to just hear it, that's where it is. Now there is a pin here and we're going to line that up there. That is the point where the belt goes. All right, so now we can lock up the pump. I've had a slight break 
from doing this job because I had to do a very quick job on a camper van because the wipers had stopped working and I got paid with a beer because it only was pushing a wire back on. In Quebec we do a lot of uh, microbrewery, mi microbrasserie beers and they're not very good to tell you honest truth. <laughs> they're awful. They don't make guzzling beer like they should do. You shouldn't have to drink beer out of a, a wine glass, that's my thing. Anyway, so let's ram let this rambling. Uh, pull it a DPS pump. We've tightened up the torque. It says 42 to 48 Newton meters or 31 to 35 pounds. That's been done down here by using a big screwdriver to lock up the pulley and your Tecton 3 8 drive torque wrench. Now, the next thing, I'm going to fit the a new pulley. And this is what I wanted to show you. This is all stock brick part. I've had these for years. I'm glad to get rid of them, really. But, let's take a quick look here. These are Aina pulleys. They're not Chinese ones. These are Aina pulleys. Aina make all the bearings for the front gears and uh, stuff like this for Land Rovers. So they've put a genuine sort of part one in a crappy brick part box. How good's that, eh? And of course, also, we're going to fit a, a Deco belt. So we're going to do a good job. Well, it makes a change, doesn't it? And uh, let's put that on. So what else can we tell you? Um, well, it's been an hour or so since I last looked at this. Um, <coughs> I checked the pulley. Yeah, I'll just re recap this if I've forgotten. The uh, keyway in the crank has a habit of chattering on the 2.5 diesels. Uh, it's really tight on the crank and it's really tight on the pulley. That means we're not going to have any issues but with the timing fluctuating, so that is good. So let me put the belt on and I'll, sh I'll show you what we do. I've got my old favourite uh, dial gauge thing here. Well, this is on inch pounds. So I've worked out that the belt tension's got to be about 20 to 23 Newton metres and 20 Newton metres is 177 inch pounds. Not much. So what I've did is I've initially set it up, but I've noticed something quite interesting that you should be quite aware of. Um, let's take the camera off and find out. When I tighten up the belt, you can probably see, I mean the mirror's a bit mucky. That must maybe a bit clearer. You see the timing pump's gone off by one tooth, yet the cam stayed, stayed good. Things to check. That's not that's not moved because it's pinned. But uh, even though this is on a pin, it's on a very light pin. So what we're going to do? Well, I mean light action, so it's it's allowed to spring out. Probably if you forget it's in. <clears throat> so we're going to back off the tension again. Move this belt round one tooth, you know, like this pulley round one tooth, and then it should be fine. But it is something to watch because it does move. So you can see now, looking at the teeth. Looking at the white marks, looking at the arrows, they are perfect, absolutely perfect. That's in line with that arrow, that's in line with that arrow, and that's onto there. So the next thing is, we've got to take out our timing pin at the back, take out our timing pin here, and we must rotate this engine twice in order to settle the belt. And that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so with the pins out, I'm going to turn this engine over and you can see instantly how the uh, the belt's a bit slack here you see this is why you have to turn it over to get the tension right Try it one more. Right, I'm going to put the pin in.
bit fiddly at the back. There we go. So we're going to turn this engine till it clicks. There we go. We're going to check our marks again. They're perfect. But the belt is too slack. So we're going to tension up the belt again using our doofiki here. Where's me? Where's me? Oh, there it is. So we're going to put this socket on here. You sort of need about 15 hands to do this, but it's not too bad. So we're going to back off the tensioner. There, did you see? I don't know if you saw it move. Check our timing marks again. Well, 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 that <laughs> the cam once moved again. So we've got to we've got to keep doing this until we get it right because we we can't let it go like that. So I'm going to uh, go through that process again. And when I'm finished, I'll get it right. Honestly, that that's they're a bit tricky. If there was a pin in here to hold the cam in, well, it'd be easy, but it keeps moving. But you see, the tension's good, but now the timing's out. So you must watch for that. So I've retensioned the belt and you can see it's nice and uh, tight now. I'm just going to put, I put the pin back in, I'm going to turn it. That's locked in. Let's check our timing marks. Let's get the mirror. There you can see they are absolutely perfect. So all that remains now We've turned this over a few times. What we're going to do now is back off the lock nut, retension the belt. It's really important with these to get the tension, as you just saw, that the tension the, the, it could be tight here but slack here, and that's what we had. I'm going to back this one off. And then we get ready with our torque wrench. We set it up to 177 and we lock that up. And then we'll take the pulley off. And we want <laughs> I know the pin's still in there, you shouldn't do this, but there we go. Do the nut, take off the pulley. Tighten up this pivot bolt here, and that's the belt done. All we've got to do now is take the pin out the back, and put it back in the box for another day. Now. That's basically all we have to do for that job. So I'll split this video into uh, sections. What we'll do now, we'll put plenty of copper grease or some grease on the shaft down here. We'll put a new gasket on, new gasket on here. We'll build the front up. But I am happy that that timing is correct. All right. So next video, we'll be probably putting the head on. I don't know if it's worth video in putting the cover on because that's kind of easy really this technical bits doing all the bolts hey besides it's lunchtime so that's how you do your timing you do need some tools though anyway I'll see you in the next video